what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make two very different but very good tasting tuna salads. The first of which is a comforting, creamy, deli-style tuna salad, and the second is a salty, oily, fishy Mediterranean style that has a pretty unique cooking method and tastes super intense. Before we get started on the deli-style salad, we need to decide what type of tuna to use first. I've got three candidates of varying cost here. On the right, I've got a can that cost about 75 cents. And as you can see, it's pretty juicy, but not in a good way. The label says that it has water and vegetable broth added to it, and apparently there's a lot of it in there. This one is not my favorite. The middle can cost $1.50, and the chunk size is not looking too good. It looks a lot like pet food in my opinion, and there's still a bunch of water in there, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I know from experience that this one is pretty soggy. The last can costs $3, and it's just a whole muscle of cooked tuna in a can. It's got a really nice large flake to it, there's no water added, and it does not look like pet food. I clearly choose the fancy one. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm only using skipjack tuna here, I read that it has the least mercury in it, and I hope that's true because I've been eating a lot of tuna over the last two weeks. Now, to make this deli-style tuna salad, I'm gonna use two cans of that $3 tuna that we just looked at. And notice that I've added all the juice that's in the can. That's not water, it's actually tuna juice. And the can says not to discard it. There's a lot of omega-3s in there, I guess. Gotta have omega-3s. For now, I'm gonna keep all the juice in there, but I might scoop a little bit out of there as we go. We'll see. Next up, I'm gonna make some bright, clean tasting mayo for the salad. And for that, I'm gonna grab a high sided container and into it add one large egg. If you have reservations about raw egg in your food, I would say just use a good store-bought mayo like Duke's. Next in goes 20 grams of water, 20 grams of white distilled vinegar, and five grams of salt. The immersion blender goes in, and now I'm gonna give this a spin to get things started. And then I'm gonna grab 325 grams of neutral oil and then stream it in slowly. There we go. Once that oil spun up, now we've got a simple, clean, flavorful mayonnaise. And if you're a Miracle Whip guy or girl, then I would say add 15 grams of sugar at this point and you probably won't regret it. Now I'm gonna set this mayo up on my gram scale, then grab my tuna bowl and then scoop out 110 grams of it. There's probably another 250 grams in this deli container of mayonnaise and it will keep in the fridge for about a week. I'm thinking there's a little bit too much tuna juice in this bowl now that I'm looking at it again. So I'm gonna take out a spoonful of that and now I'm gonna add in everything else. First up is some bread and butter pickles. These are one of my all time favorite ways to add crunchy sweet acidity to any dish and I really can't recommend making tuna salad without them. In total, I'm chopping 50 grams of these pickles down until they look kind of like relish. If you don't have bread and butter pickles, relish would be a good sub. In they go. Next up is gonna be some shallots. That's about 20 to 30 grams in total. And I prefer these to be very, very small diced. Large chunks of onions are a little bit too rustico for me and they tend to take over whatever they're in. So we're gonna go small. Once these are small diced, I'm gonna grab a little hand strainer and rinse these under cold water to remove some of that sulfury edge. That's gonna let the tuna salad stay good for an extra day in the fridge and make it taste less bad. Up next to bring some assertive brininess to the table, I'm gonna rough chop about 10 grams of drained caper. I prefer not to cut these too small because I really love it when there's pops of saltiness in the salad. That looks good. In they go. One last little bit of knife work here is to small dice some celery. That's roughly one stalk or maybe 35 grams of celery all day. Just like the shallot, I'm trying to keep this stuff pretty small because a little bit of crunch is a good thing, but large chunks in a salad are just going to be too fibrous and kind of punishing. Once I've got 35 grams of celery in the bowl with the rest of the team, I'm going to add in 30 grams of yellow mustard. I prefer yellow here because of its tang and acidity over like grainy or Dijon mustard, but if that's what you prefer, you do you. Then I'm gonna add in a generous pinch of salt or about one and a half grams worth, then 10 to 15 cranks of black pepper or about one gram. Now to mix this up, the proper tool is a fork. It really lets you get in there and break up any large chunks of tuna that don't want to become salad. In my opinion, for a deli style tuna salad, large chunks of tuna are not really something you want. Even though this $3 can of tuna does taste great, it's been cooked at a super high temperature in the can and that is not very pleasant to eat without a bunch of mayo on it. I also don't want mushy tuna paste either. So we want a middle ground where the flake size is kind of medium-ish and that looks about right. Now to determine doneness here, of course, I'm gonna give this a taste. You guys, that tastes good. Let's make it into a sandwich. For the bread, I've chosen to use the Utility White Pan Loaf from my BLT video. For the full process on how to make this loaf, check that vid, I will link it in the description. I've chosen this loaf because it's a little bit hardier than like a Wonder Bread style white bread, but it's still nicely tender and has just a little touch of sweetness to it. Once I've got two pieces sliced, I'm gonna go one more step here by lightly toasting them. An untoasted tuna sandwich with bread like this is actually really good by the way, but I think the super light toast on the outside is gonna help with structural integrity and provide just 
a little bit of textural contrast, which I love. Once that bread's toasted, I'm gonna lay it down and then spread some more mayonnaise on there to kind of act as sandwich glue. Most deli sandwiches can benefit from having this layer spread on either side. It really holds things together. And overall, it's just a super pro move. From there, I'm gonna add half of my tuna salad. That's about six ounces or so, 170 grams. Then for some additional acidity, I'm gonna top this with some more chopped bread and butter pickles. Then a few cranks of black pepper and of course, a healthy dose of shreddice. From there, I'm gonna finish this with the top slice of well mayonnaise bread, give it a little tweak to keep things tight and then give it a firm but gentle press. You guys, this tuna salad is somehow quite moist but not wet at all. It's rich and creamy and just a little bit sweet and actually has some good tasting fish in it. Go figure. For the next sandwich, we're gonna make that oily, salty, Mediterranean style tuna salad. So to get started, we need some raw tuna. This is one pound or a rough half kilo of big eye tuna. It's about $20 a pound, so it's not cheap, but most frozen tuna steaks you can find at the store, like say a yellowfin tuna steak would also work really well and probably would cost a little bit less. Now, before I cook this, I'm gonna heavily salt it on both sides with a few strong pinches of kosher salt. Lean fish like this without salt just doesn't taste good, so it needs a generous amount. Now to cook or or more accurately poach this tuna, I'm gonna grab a smallish sauce pot and put it down over medium heat. Into that goes 500 grams or maybe two and a half cups of olive oil. And yes, that is a lot of oil, but it's not super nice olive oil. It's like $6 for a half liter and it's more than good enough for just cooking fish. Five minutes later, once this oil is preheated to 150F or 65C, I'm gonna lay in my salted tuna steak and poach this over lowish heat for about 25 to 30 minutes. After about a minute of cooking, I'm gonna come back and give that tuna a gentle nudge to make sure it hasn't gotten stuck to the bottom of the pot, and then also to check the temperature of the oil. When you're poaching stuff in oil on the stovetop, you do have to check the temperature a few times throughout the process to make sure that the temperature isn't getting too high. See, it's 175F here, that's a little bit too hot, so I'm gonna move this off the heat and let it come down in temperature for three to four minutes. Man, I really wish there was an easier way to do this that was also very delicious. Oh wait, is that another piece of salted tuna right there? Oh my gosh, let's sous vide it. To do that, I'm gonna grab a tall sided pot with about four liters or a gallon of warm water and then add in my immersion circulator. In restaurants, I use sous vide all the time, especially in fine dining, but it never really made it into my home cooking, which is a shame because it's a really cool way to cook and it's not nearly as expensive as it used to be. Once I've got the circulator set up for 150F at 65C, I'm gonna grab my tuna and get that set up to cook. That's gonna involve some kind of sealable bag. Usually it's a vacuum sealed one, but in small batches at home, Ziploc bags do work. Now, one of the main benefits of oil poaching sous vide is that you can use a lot less of a much better tasting oil. In this case, I'm using a few splashes of the Alive olive oil from the sponsor of this video, Brightland. Brightland sells delicious, high quality, 100% extra virgin olive oils that are produced on small family farms in California and they're fully traceable. That last part actually matters a lot because there's a ton of variability in olive oil and you might not actually be getting in the bottle what the label says. I've actually been using the Alive oil at home a lot recently for dressing salads. It's a blend of Arbequina and Arbosana olives and it's cold pressed within 90 minutes of harvest. It's got a really nice bright green edge to it. It's incredibly clean and tastes really in focus. It's like medium bitterness, I'd say overall. It's incredibly delicious as is, or put it on top of some fresh hummus, or honestly, it's at its best just paired with Brightland Rapture Balsamic as a super simple, clean salad dressing for just arugula and some of that nice canned tuna from earlier in this video. So to try Brightland, click the link in my description and get 10% off your first essential capsule set. That's both the Alive and Awake olive oils packaged together with their champagne vinegar and their Rapture Balsamic. The capsule would make an amazing gift, by the way. Nice Nice oil and vinegar is a true luxury for any home cook and they would thank you for it. So to support me and to try Brightland, use the link in my description and get 10% off your first essential capsule set. These heavy duty Ziploc bags that I'm using have a little vacuum port that's supposed to let you suck out all the air. But since there's oil in the bag, it's not really designed for that and it does not stand a chance. So let me show you an easier way. First, lower the bag into the preheated water bath with the top cracked open. Then gently lower it a little bit further, making sure to keep that open top above the water line. As you go down, the water pressure is basically gonna squeeze out all of the air in the bag. And once you're close to that water line with the top of the bag, just press it to seal it up. And now you have almost no air in there. Once that's all sealed up, I'm gonna set a timer and let the olive oil poach this fish in the water for about 35 minutes. While that cooks, let's check back on the old fashioned style poached fish on the stove. It's been about 25 minutes and this fish should be gently cooked 
throughout. To find out for sure though, I'm gonna check in with my instant read thermometer, 150F, 65C, that's exactly what we're looking for. Now I'm gonna let this fish rest in the oil and cool down for about 30 minutes or so. Back at the sous vide tuna, it's been 35 minutes and this thing should be perfectly cooked. Now to slow down the cooking process, we're gonna add in a full quart of ice, then take out the immersion circulator and let this tuna rest and cool down for 10 to 15 minutes. When the water's not hot anymore, we're gonna take this out of the bath and then move it off to the side for just a minute. The tuna we poached in the saucepans had a good chance to cool off and now it's ready to be pulled out of the oil. If you're not gonna be making tuna salad today, you could definitely store this poached fish in this oil in the fridge for like three to five days and it's gonna stay super moist. As you can see, there's a bunch of gross coagulated fish protein on the outside from being poached and that's totally normal. We're just gonna wipe that off before we eat. When I break into this stuff, you can see right away how totally tender it is. The pieces just flake apart and it looks super meaty. The flavor is also super good and honestly, it's pretty hard to describe. Mm. Dude. It's very different than canned tuna, but it is so delicious and rich, which is weird because there's almost no fat in this fish. Oil poaching is just an amazing way to cook fish meat, it turns out. Okay, let's check on the sous vide version. Color-wise, it is very similar to the stovetop version, but moisture-wise, it really is on another level. Look how juicy this stuff is when I flake it apart. <laughs> They're both so good. That's a delight. I agree. Completely. My word. Now to make this into a salad, I'm gonna use 225 grams or about a half pound of either one of these tunas. I just happen to be using the sous vide stuff. If you wanna make this salad, but you don't wanna cook your own tuna, I would say opt for a nice oil packed white tuna like this one. This stuff is really delicious, but it does cost about $7 a can. So it's a little bit easier, but definitely not cheaper. Behind the tuna, I'm gonna add in about a half shallot or 25 to 30 grams of shallot that I'm gonna give a very fine mince. I'm not gonna be rinsing the shallot this time around because this salad is super Super rustico by design and that raw oniony edge is going to be welcome. Next up is parsley. This is 10 grams of just leaves. I've removed all of the stems and I'm going to give that a rustic chop. Nothing too specific here. That goes into the bowl. Next in is roasted red peppers. One of my favorite pantry items of all time. I love the savory sweetness that they bring to just about anything that they touch. They have an almost tomato wheat quality to them and yeah, they're dope. I'm throwing a dice on them, 30 grams total, in they go. For some texture that's like celery but has some additional mystery, I'm gonna use fresh fennel. I'm gonna be dicing it super small just like the celery because fennel can get super fibrous in the same way. 10 grams, small dice, goes in. Now, to bring two salty bits of briny sharpness to this salad, I'm gonna add 25 grams of Kalamata olives that I've just chopped coarsely, and then 10 to 15 grams of capers, depending on how much you like them, that I've also chopped coarsely. The finishing touch here is gonna be 35 grams of fresh fresh, bright olive oil, just like the stuff that we sous vide the fish in earlier, then 20 grams of good tasting red wine vinegar. Oh yeah, and the last touch here is to add 15 to 20 cranks of cracked black pepper. Now to mix this salad, I'm gonna grab a fork just like before, but this time we wanna keep things chunky. We spent some good money and time on this fish and we wanna make sure that we can enjoy it in its purest large format. If you see anything over about an inch big, just press the fork into it to break it in half. And wow, this salad looks beautiful, truly, but does it taste beautiful though. As always, we got to try it firsthand to find out. And you guys, it's oily, it's salty, it's sweet, it's a little bit crunchy and fishy in the best possible way. Now to make this into a sandwich, I'm gonna grab some bread that is rustic and narrow. This is something that's kind of baguette adjacent. If you want a recipe for a baguette, by the way, I will link to my baguette video in the description. First thing down and the only thing down is just gonna be a lot of poached tuna salad, maybe like eight ounces. This recipe makes enough for two very hungry people or maybe four people who wanna have a little snack. From there, I'm gonna crack some additional black pepper on top, then drizzle a whole bunch of olive oil on top of that. Now to finish, I'm gonna carefully snug the top piece of bread on top of the tuna, then give it a slow, thorough squish to unify the bread with the fish. In my mind, this is the ideal picnic food. In one hand, I've got a tart, chilled glass of white wine, and in the other, I've got some oily, fishy tuna salad. You tell me what could be more civilized. Let's eat this thing.